Hello traders, Damien here. Um, we're gonna run through the whole stop placements and the uh, and the uh, tighter stops. I'm doing it on the 6C because I don't trade the, uh, the euro dollar anymore. So it's a chart that I'm not used to seeing. It's order flow that I'm not used to seeing, but I want to show you how none of that really matters. So first of all, is this thing moving? Yes, 2019. So I guess it's just very slow. Let's check that out one second. I do see price moving here. This is market replay. So this is not real trading, but I wanted you to see the relevance. Yeah, 16, okay. So one of the things that we come here to the market is we see that we had price was making new structure highs and then came down, made a new structure low, lower high, new structure low. And then we had a big gap here. Uh, this is the ninth, which was Wednesday. And um, don't know exactly why there was a gap here in the middle of the week, but it is what it is. I don't know if it's faulty data. I don't know if there's some sort of news event that caused such a huge price movement. But what is what is it that we have here? Okay, what is the information that we have, and what is the expectation that we can arrive from from the information that we do have? So we have a gap higher that made a very weak new structure high. Okay we have price somewhat accelerating to the downside as we have projection increasing okay we have um, depth is still pretty deep okay so our expectation will be for a deep correction and then a new structure high so one of the things that we want to draw is our Fibonacci retracements and then um, 928 we'll speed things up a little bit here okay and we want to wait for price to show us that the bulls are interested in coming in and we had some buying pressure here we had a little bit of selling pressure here, but we still have rotation on this candle so I know that 930 is not open yet but we're in the golden zone we have the deep correction that we expected to see. We do have, uh, the only thing I don't like is the acceleration that we have here, but I don't want to take a less favorable long uh, here and increase my risk. Now my risk is going to be right below, a couple of points below the low of this candle. So it's 80, so we'll put it at 78. Okay, so we're risking 90 and 80. we're risking 12 points here on this particular trade and what that allows me to do is that if I'm wrong on this and price is just going to not react here and blow through I'm not going to get 40 points in the hole and uh, expect price to come back and, and help me find a graceful exit or having to do the unthinkable of wanting to add another position to my trade because I'm already trading at a, uh, trading at a full uh, contract size okay but I have very clear expectation here my expectation is for a higher low uh, deep correction and then a new structure high that is the only expectation I should have based on what happened here the gap complicates things okay but this is the information that I have okay so I expect the price to do that so I have two things that are favorable from a risk reward standpoint. Number one, my risk is very small. Two, I am below the lowest candle by a couple of points. I am also below the 78.6 of this whole thing. So these are all very good things. Okay, and if I get taken out, that's fine. I'd rather take the small hit, which I can very easily recover from, okay, and reposition myself at a better price than letting price get you know too far behind me and then causing issues as far as having price correct. So we're going to watch what happens here. And um, I may or may not survive this, and I'm perfectly okay with that. I like trading with tighter stops. I've been doing that uh, lately. And um, I do take on more losses. But I can rec one winning trade um, 
recovers usually three or four losing trades. When your losses are somewhere between 10 and 15 points, uh, which that's where mine have been uh, recently, and your winning trades are you know in the 20 to 30 point range, it takes one to two trades just to erase three or four losers. Um, so it's 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 a really nice, um, really nice stress-free way to to take care of your trades. Let's see here what ends up happening. Let me speed things up a little bit. If I get taken out, I get taken out. I'm at ten times the speed. You know, and for you, it may be different. You may want to be three points below the the previous uh, tail, four points. Uh, that's going to be an individual thing. I like the couple of points um, because I usually have a pretty good handle as to where these turning points are likely to take place. And um, I also am pretty good about reading the rotation and feel like if I get the rotation in an area where my expectation is, then I shouldn't tolerate price moving against me too far. And I'm willing to take that small hit because, like I said and mentioned, I can very easily recover uh, from that small deficit. Now where it becomes a problem is if you start stringing five or six of these losses in one day back to back. That's going to be unusual. If you have an idea and an expectation as to what price is going to do, where it's going to do it, and how it's going to do it, then it is unlikely that you're going to take on five or six, you know, 15 point hits or 10 point hits. Uh, I think it's a little unrealistic to, to have that happen to you if you are in tune with what's happening. Okay, because I mean, the expectations are still going to play out 70% of the time. Okay, but give yourself that opportunity to take the small hit and recover from it on the next entry giving yourself a better risk reward profile. Let me uh, speed it up. Don't want this video to be too long. We're at 100 times the speed here. We see that we have the buyers wanting to enter. And there they go. Okay, now once price gets near these highs, which is the expectation, I will move to a break even. I'm going to extend this. I am going to draw. All right, we'll slow down. We're accelerating, so I'm extending. Hit the 127, so I want to trail below the candle. Now I'm still playing around with my trailing. I do want to. I do not want to give much back at all. Um, so you know you can either trail below the previous completed candle and not the active candle. And once this candle closes, you can move it up to the previous candle and lock in that way until price takes you out. Okay, and that gives you an opportunity to be taken out at almost a full excursion of the uh, price swing. And still give you an opportunity to enter on the correction uh, very nicely. Now I have an arrow here that says I was taken out. But I do see that my counter is still going and I'm up 58 points. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal is as my trade still appears to be active. I've never seen this before. So I'm not sure. Again, this is market replay, so I am assuming that there will be some discrepancies or, or issues here. There shouldn't be. But as you can see, I got a very nice entrance. Okay, I entered here. And I'm near the high of this uh, market, so I'm, I'm taking almost the whole swing. So it becomes a very, very empowering way to trade, where if you were wrong here, I was going to take 12 points. Uh, hit so 12 points and 54 points. I mean, that's like 5 to 1 risk reward ratio, which is huge. 
okay so that's where you want to be that's where you want to be uh, at you know somewhere better than two to one on every trade where it takes you know one winner to erase two losers that's that's beautiful that's that's kind of the profile you want to have on these trades so let's speed this up a little bit wait for price to either take us out or or not so now I'm right below the completed candle it looks like I may be taken out here and that's okay I got taken out okay on 20 contracts that's fourteen thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars so that's pretty much what I'm used to trading 20 contracts and this is what a typical trade for me will look like I took uh, five to one on this one and now what we're gonna do is we expect a weak correction here and then for price to move on higher so what we want to do is we hit the exhaustion area of the 138 127 area these are the typical PRZ areas of, of most situations price is going to try to correct here so we're going to look for a rotation back up we already see some of that buying pressure still there we have uh, another pretty nice rotation here to the upside want to wait for the candle to close we see we have some sellers around okay the candle held 50% of its overall volume after an attempt to correct my stop is literally two points below this okay once I get near these highs here I'm going to get to a break even and protect my trade why because I have a little bit of room there to do that and I expect price to have some issues here so I do not have I did not get the best not in the best area here but I want you to see how the risk reward works out and how you can trade um, like this very very effectively uh, enter at 33 31 that's two points below the previous uh, low uh, so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit I'm gonna hover my uh, my uh, crosshair over this area which is my area of interest to get to a break-even that's a little bit over uh, 10 points it's about 16 points that gives me room to protect my trade okay so now I'm gonna get to a break even here lock in five No, don't have room to lock in five. I've locked in three. It looks like I'm going to be taken out here, and that's okay. That's all right. So now we're going to get some sort of a correction here. Now I'm not looking to get short here at all. Uh, why? Because the market has made a substantial new structure high on strength, on volume, on everything. Okay, so I don't expect a deep correction here at all. In fact, I'm looking to get in long again on the next rotation. I don't care if it's shallow. My risk is very small. Okay, and I have room to protect my trade. Now, I also have to process everything a lot quicker because I'm in a Forex market, which tends to be a uh, little bit bipolar at times and I'm at 50 times the speed so I'm processing everything in, in, in hyper speed um, so it's a little hard but I do see that there's still a lot of buying volume here and um, 
and I don't necessarily want to take rotation here because my now my risk is a little bigger and I have an area here where price has tried to find some resistance so taking it long here it's not the smartest thing for me to do from a risk reward standpoint because I'm not sure exactly how far price is looking to extend and I think before I get an extension like this price needs to pick up some speed looks like it's already having trouble uh, climbing somewhat so it needs it needs to come down to pick up some more orders okay and and I may be wrong but I don't think this market is going to climb too much higher before we get a correction here All right, this is a rotation to the downside. This is a an attempt that uh, may be worth trading. I'll take it. Uh, I don't trade counter anymore. But what is my risk? When you start getting into situations like this where your risk is really small and uh, your reward, it's, it's, it's quite large. You're trading at a better than two to one risk reward profile. It becomes a really you know and you feel good about what price may do or could do then it becomes uh, easier to be able to take a trade like this is against the expectation well my expectations for price to correct to where I always say price should correct to the 3d2 into an area structure and if you look across I don't really have a whole lot of structure until I get to where here to about the 3d2 okay so I feel good from a risk reward standpoint as far as you know taking risk on that this is a counter trend trade this is a trade I'm trading a correction I'm not trading a reversal that is clear okay I do have room okay from a structure standpoint here to where I could protect my trade okay that gives me at least let's see uh, 50 to about 30 so 20 10 so it's to 2 to 1 it's about a 2 to 1 risk reward ratio or better so let's see let's do that one one two three four okay so so 2 to 1 not that bad counter trend trade which I don't take anymore hardly ever okay but sometimes it makes sense to do that I'm only risking 10 points I made 50 something points on the last one what's 10 points on what could be you know a nice 20 point trade let's speed this up a little bit and if I get taken out here I'm not going to fish another one I'm not going to try to stop a rocket I took on one risky trade and that's it Looks like this is not going to work out in my favor. And that's fine. I'm not going to go fishing anymore. Let's see what happens here. We have price acceleration, volume building. Okay. It is not typical to see this happen. To see price acceleration after we had this much acceleration. So I'm not going to be looking for the long in this area. In fact, I'm going to look to see if I can get possibly short on a retest of higher price action. The bulls should be in charge here, and they're not. Notice price is not climbing. I'm 
I'm going to do this and see if the bulls do come in with see if they come in with skirts or with pants they come in with skirts we'll trade against them they come in with pants to fulfill the expectation I don't expect to see this much strength coming down here oops don't expect this at all this is beyond what I expect Well, the trading day is done. This five, okay. So it looks like it looks like that's it. I'm I'm not gonna. This is not. I didn't realize that this was a whole day. I mean, there was nothing going on this day. Okay, on a two thirty three tick. Wow, very little. Look at this day, and look at this day. So I don't know what happened this day, but um, I didn't realize that it had gone. But now you you saw what the what so great about a risk reward profile here and although I got taken out by a couple of points and it would have been a profitable trade you see that having a tie stop is really beneficial as I didn't give up anything here took 50 points 5 to 1 and here I had an opportunity to counter trend 2 to 1 uh, and I ended up taking the hit so I only gave back 10 points or 12 points uh, of that 50 points that I had gained. Really powerful way to trade and, and, and really nice. I'll make another video on the YM on the 144 tick chart uh, to kind of show you how you can trade this way on a very low time frame. I may even do the one minute since you guys are mainly uh, have uh, access to one minute and two minute charts and show you how there really is no difference to time intervals or or ticks I like the ticks I think they do give me a better price action read since it's based on transactions but what we do is applicable to any time frame any instrument I just showed you here I haven't, I haven't traded the uh, euro dollar futures uh, or, or euro dollar FX in, in a very very long time um, and today we had a, a gap here to deal with but we had our expectations still in mind and um, we had a great entry a great exit we fished a counter trend one we know those are higher risk trades we know that those are going to fail more often our stop was only 10 points 12 points worth the risk after the 50 point uh, win into a situation where this area had shown to be an area where price reacted very nicely to the downside and invited some selling you know it looks like prices were too expensive at this level and they appear to still be too expensive at that this area I was just off by a couple of points on my stop placement really doesn't concern me at all as I gave very little back okay thank you very much for your time I hope this short video had um, had value to you and again I will be making a uh, another one on the YM on a very like a two minute or one minute chart and uh, trading so we can get more frequency so we can get more trades and you guys can appreciate um, the uh, tighter stops and the uh, how to properly assess profit targets on the uh, shorter time frames on the price action that you're trading on the expectation that you're trading again I'm rambling now talking too much so that's it for me thank you guys